جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعاد لزهرا وكمالا الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today uh, in this discussion this fruitful discussion بإذن الله الكريم I have with me none other than uh, uh, Sheikh Jamal Abdi Nasser uh, Sheikh Jamal ما شاء الله the topic he and I إن شاء الله تعالى will be discussing together and the Sheikh is going to shed some light on it's uh, related to uh, علم القراءات and other issues related to Qur'an. So let's make it more general and say ulum al-Qur'an. Uh, Sheikh is, mashallah, an expert in this science, ulum al-Qur'an. He has a great deep understanding of it. So I hope you all benefit from it. I definitely will. Um, I hope all of you benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Sheikh Jamal has been studying the Qur'an and its sciences for a very long time. He has studied with Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi. He has also studied with uh, uh, Sheikh Ayman. Uh, he studied with Sheikh uh, Ahmed al Masarawi. And Alhamdulillah, all of that knowledge and that understanding that he has taken from those mashayikh and others, he's going to be Ibn Ilah al Kareem, uh, sprinkle it and share it with us, be Ibn Ilah al Kareem. So um, let me start by saying, Sheikh, how are you doing? How is everything for you? How are you coping with the, uh, uh, the pandemic, COVID 19? Allah protected you from it and your family. And may Allah protect every Muslim from it. So how are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Barakallahu feekum. I am very, very well. Alhamdulillah, uh, We're dealing with it, alhamdulillah. We're dealing with the pandemic. And Allah Azzawajal has tested us, just like he's tested um, everybody else across the world. Uh, like in, we're dealing with it, inshallah ta'ala. My family as well. I'm well, barakallahu feekum. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. I'm good. How was your studies with the Quran, uh, learning it? And inshallah, if you can share some benefit as well regarding the uh, importance of learning the Quran, Sheikh. There's something I need to mention. Uh, Sheikh Jamal, mashallah, finished the Quran in the UK. And this is something very important that I bring to the people's attention. You know, many people think, Sheikh, if you want to study the Quran, if you want to learn the Quran, you have to go to a Muslim country. That's the only place you can learn it. Um, yes. We have you, mashallah, who memorized the Quran in the UK. And then, mashallah, after that, you chose to go to uh, outside the UK and meet Shah Abdul Rashid and benefit from him. So many are looking at you and thinking to themselves, you know, this is a beacon of hope. Allahumma barik. If Sheikh, Sheikh Jamal did it, I also can do it. But, inshallah, shed some benefits with them as well, inshallah ta'ala, regarding the Quran and its importance and memorizing it and your personal experience as well, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي أنزل القرآن على قلب نبينا الأمين وجعله هدى للعالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله سيد الناطقين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد uh, The Quran is a speech of Allah عز وجل and if the only virtue for the Quran was that it is a speech of Allah عز وجل that would have sufficed and it would have been enough because for something to be an attribute of Allah, a characteristic of Allah, it shows perfection and it indicates that Allah Jalla wa'ala himself is perfection upon perfection because Allah Azzawajal's attributes are also perfect and they are complete. So I think that's a good way to begin inshaAllah ta'ala to indicate before we mention any hadith or any specific virtue that has been mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah that we mentioned that subhanAllah, the Qur'an itself is a speech of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And this is something great and azim. If this was the only thing that Allah Azza wa sent down to Bani Adam, to mankind, this is my speech, it has come from me. Min hu bada wa ilayhi this is, this is the greatest thing ever. And nothing else would have been needed. And to indicate this and to show this, subhanAllah, an entire surah, surah al-Qadr, it speaks, not, it speaks about nothing other than the revelation of the Quran and how it came down on the night of Al-Qadr. In this surah, there are no rulings. There are no stories. From beginning to end, it only speaks about that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated a whole surah, again, to show the importance 
the magnitude and the greatness of the Quran, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, as for myself, alhamdulillah, born and raised here in the UK, I learned the Quran here uh, from a tender age um, and I completed it here. And then I began post uh, Quranic studies after that, also here. And then eventually I started traveling overseas to be uh, greater in that uh, pursuit, etc. And uh, it shows, subhanAllah, that the Quran is also muyassar from Allah. Muyassar meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it divinely easy. And Something that we normally say in our classes here is may, if the only motivation you have to learn the Quran is Allah telling you He made it easy, this is enough of a motivation. So sometimes people struggle and they find the Quran to be difficult. Wherever uh, place they are in the world, whoever they are, whatever background they're from, they struggle. But we ought to remember that if we are struggling, it's not because of the Quran. It's because of something that we are doing wrong, a shortcoming on our side, because Allah said that it is easy. Either perhaps a person is not sincere, perhaps a person is sincere, but they don't put in enough time. Perhaps a person does not know the manhaj and the methodology and the way to study the Quran, and so they are not doing it properly and they are not making the most out of it. Whatever the case is, something is going wrong, but it's always on your side. So this is a good benefit as well to share. That's when somebody struggles with the book of Allah despite Allah saying it is easy, it is something that you are doing. And thus we now understand that it's not to do with being in the East or being in the West or being in the Arab lands or being in lands like we are in. It's about you yourself as a learner. And if you come with what is needed for a person who's on the pursuit of the Quran, then Allah Ta'ala, with his permission, he will give it to you. And this is also from the ijaz of the Quran, that as Muslimin, we can say, Millions of people have memorized the Quran. And our miracle is that this is only continuous and ongoing. Whereas when you look into comparative religions, you find that if you find one person who has memorized the text, that becomes a miracle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Us, subhanAllah, we say millions have memorized this is our miracle. On the other side of the table, they say that, oh, we found one person, alhamdulillah, eventually, this is a miracle. So this is something great and this is something I'll be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve this for us. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Shaykh, this is a question related to the memorization of the Quran. Um, Mashallah, you've memorized more than one qira'ah of the Quran. So a lot of people, Mashallah, they, they were struggling. We're finding it very hard to just keep one qira'ah. Uh, let alone one qira'ah, just one riwayah we're struggling to hold. So Shaykh, how, how can a person who's wanting to learn the Qiraat, who actually has, مثلاً, studied Hafs and Asim, like what, what methods can he or she take in order to memorize uh, the other Qiraat or go forward towards the other Qiraat? Can they, should, can they combine all of them at the same time and memorize it all together like that? Should they, should they do one riwaya and then like, for example, you studied Hafs and Asim, then should you do Shu'ba since it's from Asim? Or how, how do you do it? How, how would you memorize uh, Qiraat? What's the most effective uh, way to memorize the Qiraat? And before you go into that, Sheikh, just define what Qiraat is so the listeners who are not acquainted to it can inshallah ta'ala know it. Uh, the Quran, as we know, is the book of Allah Azzawajal. And the Quran we have today, Walillahi alhamd, is the same Quran that was present in the first century, century at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So after knowing that, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He sent down the Qur'an in a number of different recitation styles, the same Qur'an, to accommodate and to facilitate for the Muslimin at large, and more specifically the Arabs that were present at Zaman al nubuwa the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Because those Arabs that witnessed revelation at the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the situation was like the Arabs of today, in the sense that the Arabs of today, you find them from different tribes, different backgrounds, cultures, and countries. And so they all speak differently. Within one country, subhanAllah, you may say, this is an Arab from Iraq. And then we say he's speaking in an Iraqi accent. But the Iraqis, for example, amongst themselves, they know the different people from Iraq. This is, he's from Baghdad, he's from Basra, Wahakada. And Yemen the same, Misr the same, Saudi the same. So Allah Azza wa sent it down like that in order to accommodate for the different Arabs. This is perhaps the uh, explanation for it, but the linguistic explanation we will say is So qira'ah means to recite, to read, a reading, 
This is what it means. And qira'at means readings, recitals. This is what you can say it means. As for how do you take the subject and how do you learn it, then it is just like the Quran. In fact, it is just like any other subject in the Sharia. Ah. In the Sharia, ah, you are not left alone to study anything to yourself. And if you do this, you will walk away with uh, uh, a wrong understanding or incomplete understanding and so on. The Quran, especially, you take it from somebody who has become a master in it, an expert in it, and they give talaqi and mushafaha. So they orally transmit the Quran to you. You listen to the Quran. After you listen to the Quran from the Shaykh, you read it back. The Shaykh listens. If, it, if there's a mistake, he will correct. If there's no mistake, he will affirm it for you. And we can say this is from the greatest sun, sunan of the Prophet والسلام, because when the Quran came down to him, this is how he transmitted it. The Quran will come down. As soon as it would come down, he would transmit it and convey it to the Sahaba. Whomsoever was around him, he would pass it on. He would read, they would listen. After that, they would read, he would listen. If there was a mistake, in كَانَ هُنَاكَ سَخْطٌ أَقَامَهُ If there's a mistake, he would correct it, alayhi salatu wasalam. If there was no mistake, he would affirm it for them. And just like that, this is the same way we study. So subhanAllah, you learn now that the way we study the Qur'an through teacher and student is the same way that the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, who taught the Qur'an and passed it on to his student. And the Qira'at is just the same. So we, we follow the supervision of our teachers and what they advise us. If they advise a student to do the Qira'at all together and combine them, they do that. If they do it one by one, they do it like that. And each one of them has their benefits. But uh, it's worth mentioning that the Qudama from the ulama, the ones from past, from the past, they would do it one by one. One by one. So one Qira'at at a time. One Qira'at at a time. It's like Imam Ibn Jazari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in Tayyibat al-Nashr, وَقَدْ جَرَى مِنْ عَادَةِ الْأَئِمَّةِ إِتْقَانُ كُلِّ قَارِئٍ بِخَتْمَةِ So the, the, the ad and the norm and the style of the people of the past, the a'imma, was that they would take one riwayah at a time, one qira'ah at a time, بِخَتْمَةِ They would read the entire the, completion to the shaykh. Even the shanaqata, even the shanaqata, when it comes to learning Islamic sciences, they say, yes. وَإِن تُرِدْ تَحْصِيلَ فَنِّ تَمِّمَةً وعن سواه قبل الانتهاء ما وفي تراد في العلوم المنعجاء إن توأ ما نستبق لا يخرج. So every science, some people they love to study all sciences together. Right. So it's separated because a mother can't give birth to two children at the same time. She's got twins. They say she gives birth to one child and then another child. So knowledge, if you want to take it in nicely, you take it one after uh, one after the other. شيخ the قراءات it's a means for ease. And it's, it's to make it easy on the people to, 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 to read in this qira'ah. This qira'ah is complicated and hard on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's another qira'ah for you to read in order uh, to, if, if you find uh, this ayah hard to read in this way, or this qira'ah is hard for you, there's also another qira'ah for you to read, or another qira'ah, or another qira'ah. Is that still present till today, that the people still uh, need qira'at in order for raf'ul mashaqqa and haraj that question makes sense to remove yes. hardship and burden yes. from the people yes yes the answer is yes sheikh and the reason is because that like uh, it was uh, aforementioned before that the, the arabs of today are just like the arabs of that time in terms of what i mentioned in terms of how they speak and in terms of their vastness and their language and so on and rather the Qur'an is not for the Arab, it's for the entire Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So to make it easy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that this is going to be the case until the end of times to accommodate for all of the Muslimin who come into contact with the Qur'an. But something worth mentioning is that people only know one janib, one aspect of Qur'an, which is that it is for taysir. So this uh, lahja, this uh, tribal... Uh, um, this area they speak in this accent, they speak in the accent, so on and so the Qira'at accommodate, like it was mentioned. But that's not the only thing that the Qira'at cover. And if it was just restricted to that, subhanAllah, it would not show the completeness of the ijaz and the miracles of the Qur'an. It is just covering one area. Another area that it deals with is Qira'at al-Ma'ani. Qira'at al-Ma'ani. So you have differences in the recitation style again we say the recitation style not the actual ayah or not the text the recitation style and this does not accommodate ease for the sahaba or for the tabi'een or for us or for any of the muslimin it brings about more enriched meanings for the quran 
that which does not negate each other, contradict each other, rather each one strengthens the other to give you a more complete understanding of the book of Allah. So for example, if we give an example now, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ يَسْأَلُونَكَ They ask you, O Muhammad, عن الخمر والميسر They ask you about wine and maysir and gambling. قُلْ Say to them, فِيهِمَا In these two things, إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ It's a great sin. And Imam al-Shatibi رحمه الله تعالى, he says, وَإِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ شَاعَ بِثَّا مُثَلَّثَا وَإِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ This word, شَاعَ بِثَّا مُثَلَّثَا Sha'a is a rums, it's a coat for okay. Hamza and Kisai. Hamza yeah. and Kisai have transmitted Bitha Muthalathan. Bitha is, and then he says Muthalathan. The, the Imma is so precise. He can only say Bitha, but he added Muthalathan to make it very clear that he's speaking about Tha, not Tha, not Ba, and so on. So Hamza and Kisai have transmitted Kathirun instead of Kabirun. Okay, now one would say Kabir means something that's big. Kathir means quantity and like it's a great amount and it's a lot that's what it means they will say this is two meanings but like we just said now it's not two meanings that are contradicting because Allah says in the Quran if it was from other than Allah you would have found much contradiction in it so this is from Allah how do we now reconcile between the two okay when somebody is intoxicated and he drinks that khamr what happens to that person that person, because their mind is now not present, they will engage in sins that are great and they cannot distinguish between a major sin, a minor sin. They don't even know what's going on because their mind is not present. That's قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ Big sins. As for a number of sins, كَثِيرٌ Because their mind is also not present, they don't know when to stop. They are not going to say, ah, I just did one sin, let me stop here. They are drunk. They are intoxicated. So they continue and they continue and they continue. And thus, the final understanding and conclusion is, these people, they end up falling into sins that are major, sins that are big, and also sins that are many in their number. So now this is an example we just gave. This is not for taseer now. This is to show the ijaz and the beauty of the Qur'an and the book of Allah, so that it provides all of these things through the qira'at. And that's why some of the scholars, they say, in al-qira'ata, indeed, the qira'a, the recitation style, is bimathabati ayati. It's in the place of an ayah itself to show all of these so, Sheikh, what is the virtue for me learning Qira'at today? What ajr and ujur should I expect for learning the Qira'at? And what ajr am I going to get from learning it? Okay. The virtues of the Qira'at and the virtues of the Quran as a whole are endless. If we begin speaking about it now, we will never be able to encompass all of it. But some of the things that can be mentioned is. Allah Azza wa in the Qur'an, he says, إِنَّا نَحْوُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرِ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ It is us who have sent down the Qur'an, i.e. Allah Azza wa وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ And we are protecting and safeguarding the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is ultimately preserving his book, but he utilizes those whom he has given the Qur'an as inheritance to, to preserve it. He does it ultimately, but he has given the Qur'an to them and thus they are, they have encompassed the Qur'an in their hearts. Like Allah says, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا أي اخترناه. We have chosen them from our service. Now that you know that, when you learn and you study the Qira'at and you embark upon this path, you are being used as an example, a living example to preserve Allah Azza wa Jalla's book. This is a great thing. That Allah Azza wa Jalla is showing that the Qur'an is preserved through you. This is the first thing. The second thing is, even in terms of reward, subhanAllah, when you look at the Qur'an, you find that in its recitation, there is abundant reward that is available. مَنْ قَرَعَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ بِهِ حَسَنًا وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَىٰ أَخْرِ الْحَدِيثِ That every single letter you read, you have 10 rewards minimum. And Allah Azza wa Jalla can even multiply it for you even more. So you find in some riwayat, some qiraat, that reward will be multiplied for you even more. You will find more reward. Like uh, Abdullah ibn Kathir in his qiraat in Surah al -Tawbah. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم من تحتها not تحتها من تحتها now you get more reward for this so now you are also benefiting and the virtue here is that you are increasing your reward when you read this 
وهكذا there's so many things that can be mentioned for it these are two inshallah ta'ala two two strict <laughs> Sheikh, now we need to know that a lot of people are thinking okay mashallah we've understood the concept of qiraat and what it means where, where does al-ahruf is sab'a that we keep hearing where, how, what's, the, what's the relationship between that and al-qiraat how do they work together are they both the same are they two separate entities are they two separate things what's the relationship with, with, these, with these two we hear al-qiraat is sab'a and we hear, hear al-ahruf is sab'a where did this confusion even come from in the first place so uh, I've asked you many questions <laughs> I'll try my best I'll it for us inshallah ta'ala Allah uh, Jesus. So, uh, at the time of revelation, the Quran came down upon the Prophet والسلام, and as we know, the isnad for the Quran and the change for the Quran, uh, as Ahlul Sunnati, we believe that the Quran came from Allah Azzawajal upon the Prophet والسلام's heart through Jibreel alayhi salam. This is the isnad that we have. We already know that. Okay, so when the Quran first came down to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet والسلام, he expressed that this one style that the Quran has come down in will be something difficult upon the Ummah that they all have to read in one specific way. So Jibreel alayhi salam, he went back to Allah جل, and informed Allah about what the Prophet والسلام, said. And so Jibreel came down with the second way and the third way until he came down with the seven ahruf. Where the Prophet والسلام, he says, in the Quran. The Quran, this Quran has come down in seven ahruf. In that hadith, and this hadith has come in different, different ojuf and different ways and has been transmitted from different sahaba, the Prophet والسلام, he didn't mention to us what they are. So he didn't say, al harf al awwal kada, al harf al thani kada, he didn't mention it sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa But what he mentioned, what's authentically attributed is that this did transpire and this happened. So the ulama, they went out and they began explaining this to us. And the opinion that has become the most dominating one is that sab'atu ahrufin is sab'atu awjuhin. Seven different ways. And these seven different ways make up the ten qira'at. So the Quran has come down in seven ahruf. The authentic schools that have been uh, in the end standardized, Nafi' ibn Kathir, Abu Amr ibn Amr, Asim, Hamza, Kisai, Abu Ja'far, Ya'qub, Khalaf, these are the ten qira'at. They are made up of the seven ahruf. What is an example of the seven ahruf? It is that some of the Arabs, the Arabs, like we said before, they would say Musa, others will say Musa, others will say Musa in between. So this is a harf. This is a style. We said Oju, it's a way of reading. So this is a one, a part of it. La rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqeen. Dalik al kitabu la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqeen. Idram and idha, merging and clarifying. Alayhim, alayhimu, alayhum. These are the different examples of the Ahruf. And these Ahruf, they make up the Qiraat that have now been standardized. And so when you look into the Qiraat, these different schools, if you want to call them that, you find all of these things present. Okay, after that, we say, how many Qiraat are there? The Qiraat are 10 that are authentic. But the scholars have written different books on them. So for example, you have uh, Ibn Mujahid who wrote As-Sab'ah, Al-Qira'at As-Sab'ah. You have Ibn Ghalbun, who wrote a book in the Qira'at Al-Taman. You have another book uh, called Al-Shamsu uh, Al-Shamsu al munira fi Al-Tis'a Al-Shahira, the nine Qira'at. You have Al-Nashar fi Al-Qira'at Al-Ashar. You have others that are written in the Qira'at in 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You have Imam Al-Hudari, who has the kitab called Al-Kitab Al-Kamil fi Al-Qira'at al khamsin So the A'imma, they wrote on these different things, and they can do that. But the authentic Qur'an that are mutawatir, that are sound and sahih, they are ten. Anything above that are ashad. Okay, so now we know that they are ten and the ahraf are seven. Why do people get muddled up? Which is the final question from what you asked me, Sheikh. It is that, firstly, the first individual who wrote about the Qur'an when, it, when authorship began was this imam that I mentioned, Imam Ibn Mujahid. And he chose to write the book, his book, on the seven Qur'an. Seven Qur'at that he chose. And the hadith says seven as well. So people began getting confused, seven and seven. And later on down the line, the most prominent kitab came into existence in Qur'at known as Hirzul Al-Amani wa Wajhu Al-Tahani fi Al-Qur'at al-Shab, fi Al-Qur'at al-Sabah by Al-Imam al-Shatib, and he also chose 
seven. So people began to assume seven, seven. We keep seeing the number seven. Qiraat must be seven. Anything above seven is incorrect. So we say that's not the right way. The right way is that the Qiraat are ten. These are the authentic Qiraat. They are all sound and equal. They are all mutawatir. But what makes them up is the seven ahruf. Ahruf is one thing. Qiraat is something else. Allah knows. Allah So Sheikh. The, uh, you mentioned some of the ulama have written in books of Qiraat. You mentioned uh, Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid. You mentioned uh, Imam Shatibi uh, rahimahullah. The question here, Shaykh, is that what is the most studied book when it comes to ilm al Qiraat? Yani if I'm a student of knowledge, I want to study Qiraat, I want to learn Qiraat. Yani how do I study these books? After, of course, taking it with a Shaykh, studying it with a Shaykh. Can you put down the methodology of the books and how they work? Which one goes first? In what order should I do it in? Because you mentioned previously the, the methodology of studying, of studying the science. So how would someone study Qiraat? Um, so Qiraat, there are two main ways a person can, can take. The first way is to do it one by one. Like I mentioned, this was the methodology of the A'imma of the past. Like we mentioned earlier in Qutaybat al Nashar. So if you do that, then you just take it one riwayah at a time, one riwayah at a time. And the way this is taught is that you will sit with a shaykh who's an expert, who's proficient in the Quran, and he will teach you the concepts of this qira'ah, the principles of it. The qira'at have two sections they have al usul al mutarida the repet repetitive principles of the qira'ah. So, for example, to say, uh, every single alif that comes before a ra maksura, a ra that has a kasra, Abu Amr and Dur al Kisai, they do imala. Al nair, wal dir, wal absir, wal himir. This is now a usuli principle, that a foundational principle meaning usuli, and you implement it throughout the Quran. So the teacher will t teach you first those principles that are repetitive and reoccurring in the Quran. Then he will teach you the specific furush. Al-Masail al-Farshiyya, Surah Al-Fatiha, what are the changes in this Qur'an? Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, until you get to the end of the Qur'an. When he teaches you all of that, you go away, you practice, you come back to the Shaykh, and then you apply what you learned, and you do all the practicality, and with that said, you have completed the, that style. And you do that one by one if you're doing it individually. If you're doing it collectively, then the first book that is taught in this fun is Hirz al-Amani wa Wajhu al-Tani fil Qur'an al sabah Al-Musamma bil-Shatibiyya. Shatibi by Imam Shatibi who passed away in the year 596th century. You know? uh, so Imam Shatibi he wrote a poem, and this poem is a lamia. Every single line of poetry it ends in la la. بدأت ببسم الله في النظم أولا تبارك الرحمن الرحيم وموئلا لا لا لا. He finished like so. He speaks about this in 1173 lines, and he speaks about all of the Qur'an al Sabah. So you take that book and you study it. After completing that book and taking the sharah and the understanding and the explanation, you now know Qur'an al sabah What do you do after that? You take the next book, which is a kitab written by Al-Imam Ibn al-Jazari rahimahullah ta'ala, known as Al-Durratul Mudiyya fil Qiraat al-Thalat al-Mardiyya al-Mutammima bil Ashara. Ibn al-Jazari rahimahullah ta'ala. And it speaks about the other three Qiraat. So these two kitabs together, you study them, Shatibiyya first, then Al-Durra, Shatili is by Shatili and Durra is by Ibn al-Jazari. You study them and with that you have Al-Qira'at al-Ashr al-Sughra. What uh, can be loosely translated in English as the 10 minor Qira'at. What do they mean by minor? They mean that every single riwayah has one tariq and this is something we can speak about later inshallah. Once you do all of that, you now go further ahead and you major in the subject and you become a further advanced in it and you study the kitab and that's by Al-Imam Ibn al-Jazari rahimahullah ta'ala, a book that's referred to as Bukhari al-Qurra, some of them call it. They say in, in the science of hadith, the highest kitab, the greatest kitab, asahu kitab ba'da kitab billahi sayyid al-Bukhari, every Muslim knows this. But they say, although every Muslim knows that when you're in the science of hadith, the book that's the most treasured, of course, to the muhaddithin, is Sahih al-Bukhari. For many reasons, not only because, as some people think that uh, everything in it's authentic, not that's not the reason. There's more than there's more to it than that. But just like that, they say that Tayyib al Nashar is like that, like Sahih al Bukhari. They give that similitude because they say, uh, if you ever want to know if there's any Qira'a that's authentic, you open that kitab. If you don't find it in there, 
فعلاً. No, that this is not the right qira'ah. Automatically. And the other, it's not, it's not the author that's saying that only. The a'imma after him have also testified to that. They looked at his works and they researched it and they checked it and they said he was right in that. This is the highest kitab here. Once you complete that, you have learned all of the qira'ah that are authentic. So it's a small part. People think that it's a lot. I just mentioned three kitabs now. And if you learn those three kitabs only, although there's more kitabs out there, you're going to become one of the most prominent figures in this film and in this subject. Shaf, is it possible you can give us a practical example of recitation uh, in uh, the Qiraat, inshallah? Bidnillah. Okay. You put me in the spot. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> what I will do then, I will read the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah and I will combine the Qiraat, Al Ashr, everything, every single possible way to read the Quran, I will combine it just to show the viewers and those that are listening. Um, the reality of this, because people think that the Qur'an is just too much to handle and so on. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan ar-rajeem Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif Lam Alif Lam so I will explain as I'm going along. This ayah, I read it twice only. I read it twice and I've just read all Qara'atul Asha. So it doesn't mean 10 Qara'at, you read it 10 times. It doesn't mean that. Now, just reading, reading it twice, the first way I read it, nine out of 10 of the Qara'at, they agree on that. So because they agree, this is the methodology that how we studied it. You don't have to repeat nine times the same thing. You say it once and it's all done. Then you read the Qari who has a difference. In this case, the sakatat and the pausing that I've done between every letter, alif, lam, neem, it has been transmitted by Al Imam Abi Ja'far rahimahullah ta'ala from the Qur'an al ashara And like that, I have completed. Next ayah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ I finished again. I've done all 10 Qur'an to do so this is something very, it's not as hard as people assume it to be. Again, I have finished. Five, five times so, already. Five times already. So it doesn't take much time at all. And uh, you may notice, uh, the viewers may notice that some of the changes that I was doing, I was doing it towards the end of the ayah. And this is the methodology that's practiced in the field that you do akhir khilaf. The last khilaf that there was, he starts from there to make it easy. For example, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِنَّ رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Why do I need to read the whole ayah? It saves time as well. It's a very beautiful science. Even the way you seek it and its sort is very beautiful as well. So what's, it, what's actually really amazing, Sheikh, we really have to shed some light on and bring to the people's attention is that subhanAllah, Yani, if we today looked at what you just recited on us, or we think about it and contemplate on it, we actually have with us right now someone who has the entire qiraat with them. It's actually preserved in just this podcast, this discussion we're having right now. We've got the Quran preserved here. So well, to think that the Quran hasn't been preserved by thousands and you know greater and more stronger people around uh, around the world, not to mention through history, and yani people who who had photographical memory and this to this right now should show every single person around the world muslim non-muslims that i need the preservation of the quran that we have sent down this quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that and we are going to protect it i mean it's it's just protected in this podcast right now so uh, i really want people to think over this point to be honest to really think and understand and, and i've said this a couple of times to people western academia cannot really fathom um, how the Quran is preserved and we shouldn't blame them we should not blame them because they don't have the concept of memorization 
I mean, you and I know we both studied in, in, in school, secondary school, we studied in university, we've studied in college. I mean, I was studying university and I was studying linguistics. The professor that was teaching me, yeah, and he sometimes would look back at us as students and say to us, you know, how do you spell that word? I remember in one class, the teacher asked, what, how do you spell necessary? And he said, this is a linguist teacher who's teaching linguistics and teaching language and whatnot. Yeah, and they don't give importance to the concept of memorization. And we give not only to the, 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 the uh, I and how it's read, but how you pronounce it and where you stop and how long you stop and how long you prolong it. Yeah, and all of that is preserved. And all of that was passed on from the Prophet ﷺ to uh, this time that we're living. Until the Day of Judgment, it's going to be preserved. It's going to be preserved. Allah like, may Allah protect Allah. you, man. SubhanAllah. May Allah protect Ameen. you. Ameen. Ameen. Um, Sheikh, I want to now go into the doubts that these Orientalists, missionaries, uh, non-Muslims put forward regarding the preservation of the Quran. Before I go in, is there anything else you want to add on? Some points of benefits you want to share? Or should we just straight uh, go into the Shubhat? No, we'll go into it. We'll go into it. We'll go into, we'll go into the Shubhat, inshallah ta'ala. So, Sheikh, first of all, the variation of the Quran is something that Muslims have already known through the time of the Prophet Sallallahu until now. It's something that's been documented, it's been transmitted, it's been passed on. It's not something we're hiding, right? That the, uh, the Surah Al-Baqarah, the Furuq that you just read, the differences between the Qur'a, it was something documented sah, through history. So it's nothing we're hiding yeah. and we're saying, okay. And that itself was protected like that, that the Prophet recited it in all of those different uh, forms and all those different ways. So that's very important for the people to know, inshallah ta'ala. The first doubt, inshallah ta'ala, or the first shubha, which means doubt uh, related to the preservation of the Qur'an that I want to bring uh, to your attention, inshallah ta'ala, and I want you to shed some light on, is uh, the Qur'an, multitude narration, mass transmission. You know, scholars mention that the Qur'an is mutawatir, mass transmission. It's multitude uh, narration. It's, the Qur'an came to us through a large quantity of sahabas and tabi'een and tabi'u tabi'een and until today, we've had it through that mass transmission. Is there a basis for that? Is it true? Are there differences in that issue? Uh, inshallah ta'ala, that's the question. So, the Quran, is it mutawatir? The, the first thing that uh, needs to be done uh, before answering that question is we ought to define what mutawatir is. And the scholars, they mentioned different um, numbers to define, to define what makes a report mutawatir. So some mentioned 10, some mentioned 7, some mentioned more than that. They mentioned different numbers. But what mutawatir means is a report, a khabar, that's passed on from generation to generation. And this khabar, the amount of naqala, transmitters who are passing it on, it is impossible for you to assume and perceive that this is a lie and this is fabricated, this is incorrect and so on. This is understanding. Okay, very simple. This question can be answered in uh, less than a minute. Okay, from our times now, if we work backwards, from our time to Imam Ibn Jazari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and Ibn Jazari, he was from the 8th century, so not too far away, the 8th century. And he was a muhaqqaq of this field, like mentioned previously. From our time to his time, it is mutawatir without a doubt. Obviously, if, if one podcast has already one person who has it, and may Allah well keep all of us firm, and may Allah well teach us uh, his kitab in the way that uh, is, is, is the most correct way and the most pleasing way to him. So if in one podcast, you're getting podcasts with just one person. So imagine this, the state of the ummah across the world. There are thousands, like we said earlier, in the millions maybe who have memorized the Quran. Mm -hmm. Then you have in the time of Ibn Ghazali, until the naqala themselves. The ten imma that we mentioned earlier, Nafi ibn Kathir and Tawkhalaf. These, this time, it's also passed down in multitude narration as well. We don't have time to go through all of the evidences and bring them, but this is, we're just breaking it down into three categories. Then you have their time until the time of the Prophet. Okay, what, one, what the person has to understand is during the time of the Prophet, this is when revelation began. This is when revelation started. So passing on revelation and differentiating between what is abrogated, what is not abrogated, what is the Quran, what is other than the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ, even at one instance, he said, 
other than the don't write from me other than the Quran. Whoever has done that, wipe it away, rub it away. Because he said, I don't wish for the people he expressed to get muddled up and jumbled up and confused between the Quran and the Hadith and the Sunnah and other things as well. So this is being done. These extreme lengths are being taken in order to preserve the Quran. So and during that time, this is when it was beginning. So during this time as well, what would happen is some of the Sahaba, they would learn certain ayat of the Quran, certain differences, certain words, etc. This would be abrogated. Like for example, during the time of uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we had uh, Hudayfa who left Medina and he heard some of the Sahaba bickering and differing. And the generation after the Sahaba, the Tabi'een as well. In the khayrun min qira'ati wa asahu min qira'ati. My one is better than your one. My one is, has more virtue than your one. And he came back and he informed Amir al-Mu'mineen, Uthman ibn Affan. And after that, what happened was, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala and he brought back the Quran and the differences that the people had and this bickering, he put it to an end by bringing the people back to the prophetic mushaf that was with Hafsa. This is another story about how that all happened. So during that time, what happened was people assumed because all of that was happening, mm -hmm. that means it's not mutawatir. But the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is that even during that time it was mutawatir. So again, just to summarize, three times, just to make it very easy. Our time to Ibn al and I'm doing it backwards. Mutawatir, bila shak, and there's no problems with it. No one comes out with things that are abrogated nowadays. We don't even know. We don't know them. Ibn al Jazari's time to the A'immatul Ashara, the 10 Qira'at, also the same case. The A'immatul Ashara to the time of the Prophet وسلم, this is when the Quran was spreading in the beginning. And so people think because things were going wrong and people took away abrogated things and they found out later on that it's abrogated. This uh, warrants that the Quran is not mutawatir. And this is completely incorrect. Because if it was not mutawatir at the first time, it can't be mutawatir in the last time. That's true. It can't be not mutawatir in the beginning and all of a sudden it's mutawatir at the end. But what happened in the middle? And this is how the doubt actually came in. People thought, no, but the Mus'haq was sent here and there. And they used that as an, a door to open that the Quran is not mutawatir because of all of these things that are happening. But we say to them that this is not a doubt that has weight because you have not understood how the Quran was spread and taught and transmitted. If you did, you would understand that it was mutawatir despite those changes occurring and Uthman bringing the people back to one way. Sheikh, so someone might come back and still say, Sheikh, but for example, the Quran that we have today, we have, we know Uthman radiallahu anhu, he sent five masahif to five main cities, even though some scholars mentioned seven, but five main cities. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he sent the Masahif. He sent it to Mecca, Medina, Sham, Basra, and Kufa. We have in the Qira'ah of the people of Mecca that they read Tajri min tahtiha al anhar. The word min is in the uh, Mus'haf of the people of Mecca. But it's not present in the Mus'haf of the people of Basra, and Kufa, and Sham, and Medina. So here some people benefit from the ikhtilafat the differences and the variations that are present in the mushafs, tajri, min, and not in the rest. They say this is where um, the Quran, this is where the Quran, it's, uh, things were added into it. How is it possible that here has min tahtiha al-anhar and the rest of the masahif don't have it? Did one of the writers put it inside there? Was it a mistake that he wrote? How would we respond to the ikhtilaf of the qira'at is due to the rasm al-masahif? And it's nothing to do with it being taken from the Prophet. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of parts to this question. Again, it's a very simple question. All of these doubts, in reality, they're not doubts. It, they've just come, as we, as we, we both know, Sheikh, from those who are... Uh, uneducated and, and ignorant in the matter. And so they try to make something that's not a doubt a doubt. Mm -hmm. So firstly, the Sahaba, when they wrote the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu would summon them to his gathering. So Jibreel would come down with maqta' Quran. He would come down with a portion of the Quran, be it a ayah, be it a couple of ayat, be it a surah, however it would come down. He would summon them, they would write it down. And after they would write it down, the Prophet Sallallahu would affirm what they had written. They would read it back to him and they would affirm it like that. So we have to know firstly that the Sahaba were not able to write down anything that wasn't affirmed by the Prophet They couldn't do that. 
And if they were to do that, we have to remember that Jibreel is bringing down the Quran from Allah Azzawajal. And the Quran, Allah has taken it upon itself to preserve it. That wouldn't even transpire anyway. After knowing that, for example, the example in Surah At-Tawbah, Min Tahtiha and Tahtaha. Firstly, this doesn't bring a change in the meaning. Jannat in gardens, Tajri, that flow. Beneath them, what is flowing is Anhar. Rivers are flowing beneath these gardens in Jannah. And the other Qira'ah, uh, Jannat, and you have, gar- you have gardens, Tajri, Tahtaha, Anhar. Beneath it, rivers are flowing. So, Min is just bringing a Ziyada. And the scholars say, Ziyada to Mabna, Tadullu ala Ziyada to Ma'na. To increase in the st- structure of the words and to have one more word or one more letter and so on, it just increases in the meaning, like I mentioned before. It doesn't change the meaning or take it away. And it's the same thing. It's like me saying, uh, I, am, I am sitting on the chair um, and I, I say, for example, um, now I am sitting on the chair. I've added one more word. I'm sitting on the chair. Now I'm sitting on the chair. It doesn't change the meaning whatsoever. I'm sitting on the chair. Is this present case that I'm in currently. Now it's just me re-emphasizing that at the moment I am sitting on the chair. It's the same thing with this example that we have brought, Min Tahtiha. So what the Sahaba would do at the time of Uthman ta'ala anhu is the Masahif, they would, be, they would be able to accommodate for the differences in the Qira'at, but there will be places where it can't accommodate, like here, Min Tahtiha and Tahtaha. Because you either have one or the other, you can't have both. So here, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he commanded the scribes during his time when they were compiling the Qur'an to write down that change in that specific mushaf that was being sent to that specific land. But what he would do on top of that is send that mushaf to that land, in this case Mecca, and he would send a sahabi, a professional, proficient reciter, along with that to remind and to teach the people to educate them that this mushaf is not about the mushaf. This is secondary preservation. It's always about primary preservation. sudur qabla sutur. It's about preserving it in your heart. So he would teach them that this change here, it doesn't bring a difference in the meaning. It's only to increase and beautify the meaning. And this is how it was transmitted by the Prophet. And look at all of the, these differences that we have. You find none of them contradicting each other at all. And for someone to say that it's a very weak and feeble uh, argument and no, no. Oh, Uthman uh, radiallahu anhu, when the when in the Mus'haf of Mecca, Tajri min Tahti yes. al Anhar was written in there, it was deliberately yeah. done because that was a recitation that was taken from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it was taken outside the other ones to teach the people that these are two forms of recitation of the Quran, which all of you, uh, and 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 it wasn't just the concept of reading from the the Mus'haf alone; it was also learning from the Qari that was sent with the Mus'haf. So it's not just exactly. Everyone read the Mus'haf yourself. No, no. Yeah, the Mus'haf was, wasn't, nah, the Mus'haf wasn't just sent to them and just thrown their way. No, it was yeah. sent. And, 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 emphasizing that this whole science, is the way that you understand it is through Talaqi wa Mus'haf. That's very important, subhanAllah. Um, so another question, inshaAllah ta'ala, the Mazdar of the Qira'at, is it Wahyi or is it just based on Arabic dialects? the source in which the Qira'at comes from? Is it just based on the Arab dialect? Or is this a revelation taken from the Prophet Sallallahu who restricted it and said, this is how it's recited? Or is the Qur'an just merely based on the dialect? And if someone finds another dialect out there, he can read the Qur'an with it. It's open for him. The answer is the Qur'an is from Allah Azza wa the Quran, we said, we have to differentiate between two things. When we are saying it accommodates for the different dialects and the vastness in the Arabic language, doesn't mean it's taken from there. How can the Quran be taken from there if it's a speech of Allah? It debunks the whole understanding. The Quran is from Allah Azzawajal, and it was sent down upon the Prophet Sallallahu and he recited it like that, and he transmitted it like that, and they learned it from him, and they passed it on like that. So it's, it's from Allah Azzawajal, and it's transmitted from the Prophet Sallallahu authentically. But we say that it accommodates and facilitates for this. We don't say it is taken from here. Because taking it from here is the doubt that the people think because it facilitates for them, it was taken from their language and it's based upon that. That means it has independent human reasonings and people are the ones who are choosing what to take, what to put in. Well, with Tali, after that, we are able to do the same as well. We are able to say, okay, but now 14 centuries later, 
uh, we speak differently. And even the, the Arabic languages, maybe someone may say things like that, and they may decide to change even more. So we say it's not to do with taking it from the, the Arabs. It is taken from Allah Azza wa And this is evident in the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu like the one that was mentioned in the Hadith Quran, Unzila, it was sent down. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tell his Sahaba, Hakada Unzilat wa Hakada Unzilat. It was revealed that way. It was revealed that way. This shows that the tawfiq is, is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. This, uh, yeah, you said so that. You said that the variation in the Qiraat and the different ways of reading the Quran, you said that it's complementing one another. Reading, Ya Yaladina Amanu in Jaakum Fasikum Binaba in Fatabayanu Fatatabatu, it complements one, one another. Ya Yaladina Amanu in the Kumtum in a Salati Fasiru, Juhakum, Idea Kum Ilan Marafati, one Sahubur Usikum, Arjula Kum, Arjulikum. It complements one another, it gives additional meaning. But Shaykh, there are places that the Quran they say that is contradicting one another. There's contradiction here. Like غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ أَمْ غَلَبَتِ الرُّومِ How do you reconcile uh, between that? غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ is مَفْعُولُ الَّذِي لَمْ يُسَمَّ فَاعِلُهُ Rome was conquered. And غَلَبَتِ الرُّومِ is Rome conquered. Conquered. So this is totally different meaning. And this is two qira'ah. How would your statement of saying that the Qur'an complements one another and the fact that we see clear-cut contradiction here, how would you respond to that? Okay, Sheikh, so غُلِبَتِ uh, الرُّومِ and غَلَبَتِ الرُّومِ Rome was conquered and Rome conquered it, it itself is the one that's conquering. Um, that's true. It's completely different. But uh, the fact of the matter is that كُلُّ عِلْمٍ يُسْأَلُ عَنْ أَهْلِهِ Every single science we ask is people and the experts here. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier Kabir and Kathir. And Sheikh, you just mentioned Fatabayyan or Fatathabatu. We have Malik, Malik. These ones, we understand that although each one is uh, independently different, ultimately they are the same. Someone will say here, like you said, Ghulibati Rum, Ghulibati Rum. You can't even reconcile them. Mm -hmm. And that is true. But Ghulibati Rum is the correct way of reading. And Ghulibati Rum does not even exist. This is the thing. So when these doubts are coming, people don't understand the science. They have not even approached the people of the fun and they have not asked them and they have not they just see that someone has mentioned غَلَبَتِ uh, الرُّومِ and this is a weak or maybe even fabricated way of reading so غَلَبَتِ الرُّومِ now the example you mentioned for example none of the qiraat have transmitted that all 10 qiraat that are mutawatir none of them have ever transmitted غَلَبَتِ الرُّومِ and thus this doubt is also debunked as well so anytime you may fear a true contradiction is because aslan is mm -hmm. not authentic mm -hmm. no. so you're saying that غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ is the qiraat Al Ashar al Mutawatira that we have today. They all agree on that ayah. They all no agree one has read the room different. They all and say. Ghalabati Rumna is a qira shaza. It's a qira that's weak and it's, it doesn't exist. It's none of void. It doesn't exist. None of void. Yes. And, it, and the importance of taking it back to its people and asking them and verifying with them. It's so important. It's, it's amazing. So, Sheikh, how would someone determine this qira'a is sahiha maqbula, it's accepted and it's authentic and this qira'a is shadda, it's rejected. I mean, how did you just know that? Like, how did you know that this qira'a is maqbula, it's accepted in the first place? Uh, mm. Help some people who don't know the qira'at, can you give them a guideline to determine this qira'a is maqbula, accepted, and this qira'a is shadda, it's rejected, it's not accepted? How did you know? So we have three pillars, Sheikh. Yes. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. This fun, honestly, is so... Imagine how we broke down all of the uh, questions today, the practical demonstration, and we broke it down. We, yeah. You asked me about the books that I studied, and I only mentioned three books, and only those three books can lead you to a very high level. Right. Now I'm going to tell something very simple as well. This science, yeah. people think, is so difficult, but in reality, it's the book of Allah, and it's so easy to understand. So there are only three pillars. To authenticate the qira'ah, there's only three pillars. The first one is that it's Arabic, in the Arabic language. Obviously, because the Quran has been sent down in the Arabic language as found in the, in the Quran itself. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That the Quran has come down in a pure and eloquent Arabic style. So the Quran has to be in Arabic, number one. Number two, it has to be transmitted to us in an authentic chain of narration. And these chains are 
mutawatir like we mentioned earlier. And number three, finally, it has to be in accordance with the rasam and the scripture of the Quran, which is a subject that branches from ulum al-Quran that has great importance as well. And it's not necessarily the same as qira'ah. The, the masahib that were written at the time of Uthman that were sent to those five lands, Mecca, Medina, Basra, Kufa, and Asham, it has to be in line with one of those. If you find a qira'ah that meets those three conditions, it's known as a qira'ah maqbula sahiha. And the ten qira'at are the only ones that have met that. All of the others, they have some problem with, with these matters. For example, ghalabat al-Rum. Let's speak about that one. Can ghalabat can ghala, is ghalaba Arabic? The answer is yes. Ghalabat, it's Arabic like we mentioned earlier. It meets that condition. Number two, does it fit the mushaf? Yes, because ghalabat and ghulibat can be written the same way. But the third one is the problem that there's no chain for this. That's authentic and that's, that's mutawatir. And thus this qira'at completely becomes none of With applying these rulings, we understand how the whole science works. And Imam Ibn Nizari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in Qayyibat al-Nashr, فَكُلُّ مَا وَافَقَ وَجْهَ نَحْوِي وَكَانَ لِلْرَسْمِ احْتِمَالًا يَحْوِي وَصَحَّ إِسْنَادًا هُوَ الْقُرَانُ فَهَذِهِ الثَّلَاثَةُ الْأَرْكَانُ فَكُلُّ مَا وَافَقَ وَجْهَ نَحْوِي Everything is in accordance with the Arabic language. وَكَانَ لِلْرَسْمِ احْتِمَالًا يَحْوِي And it's in accordance with the Rasm and the scripture of the Sahaba. Even if it's ihtimal. Mm-hmm. Even if the Mus'haf can accommodate for it, like Malik and Malik. وَصَحَّ إِسْنَادًا And the Isnad and the chain for it is correct. Can you, can you elaborate on that one point, please? Sorry to interrupt. Ihtimal. Ihtimal. Ihtimal and Yahwi. So for example, you just said Malik and Malik. What does it mean, Ihtimal and Yahwi? Like what does an Imam uh, Ibn Jazari mean? طيب. Malik Yawmideen in Surah Al-Fatiha. It has been transmitted as Malik Yawmideen and Malik Yawmideen. Mm-hmm. Six out of ten of the Qira'at have transmitted Malik Yawmideen. Mm-hmm. And four have transmitted Malik. Okay. Mm-hmm. But when you look in the Mus'haf, all of the Masahib, they wrote it as Malik Yawmideen. Even when you look at Riwayat Hafs today, and we all know Riwayat Hafs. Mm-hmm. Riwayat Hafs is Malik. That's what's been transmitted. But when you look in the Mus'haf, it is Malik Yawmideen. What do we mean? The Meem and the Lam and the Kaf are connected. That small Alif in the middle is not from the Sahaba. It's not from Ilm al Rasim. It's from the scholars who came after and they did Dabt to make it easy for the people. So, Ihtimal al Yahwi means that the Mus'haf is able, able to take on board two Qira'at when you write it in one single way. So, you write it in one single way, but it can take multiple ways. For example, Sheikh, your name is Abdul Rahman. Right? Abdul Rahman, if we move away from the Quran and we speak about how you write it, some you, you, you would write it as Meem, Alif, Noon, Ar Rahman. Others, you, want to, you're, you write Meem and Noon. Hmm. So, this is something that the, the Arabs knew how to write the Quran like that. And now the Mus'haf can take both of these, so they will write it in one way to make it easier. This is what it means, Ihtimal. So, it can take the two different readings, although it's one single way of writing. That's what it means. Yeah. And like I mentioned, where it can't take it, like min tahtiha, inna Allah al ghani al hamid, wal ghani al hamid. They would. Anam. La zirata, shatabi says in Aqila, bisadi kulu sirat in was sirat in the kulu. This sirat has been transmitted, sad and seen, and khalaf has transmitted sad and zayt together. You only write sad. If only we had a course, and alhamdulillah, this is an opportunity to even share. Uh, uh, Allah Maria is going to release inshallah ta'ala of course inshallah we're going to release uh, Aqila from Rabbi Qasaid inshallah ta'ala we can give more this is just one podcast and people are learning so much and that it's not as as doubtful as doubtful and you know as confusing as it seems it's very simple wow. all of the scholars they agree that you have to write Sa'd even if you transmit Za or you transmit Sa because the Quran transmission is one thing and writing is something else so he said the second one was the Rasul of the Quran and the final one is وَصَحَّ إِسْنَادًا that the Qur'an has a, a ch- sound chain and an authentic chain. It's also mutawatir. And then he said فَهَذِهِ الثَّلَاثَةُ الْأَرْكَانُ These are the three pillars for the Qur'an. SubhanAllah. Shaykh Allah, may Allah honor you. I'm, I'm, I'm benefiting from you a lot. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. And I know this, people who are watching, uh, inshallah ta'ala, are definitely going to benefit a great amount of knowledge. And subhanAllah, really? it's, it shows you that um, if you want to learn something and you want to understand something, it's always important to go to its people. When you go to people who haven't understood it, haven't mastered it, haven't studied it, you know, that's where the shudud comes from, the strange opinions, the confusion. And um, as you mentioned, uh, Sheikh, there's going to be a course that you're going to be doing explaining the muqaddimah of Aqilatu Atarab al-Qasaid 
written by Al Imam uh, Shatibi, rahimahullah. Sheikh, can you just give us uh, a brief understanding of why this book is going to help uh, understand the Quran and its preservation and also have an understanding of the Book of Allah Azza and connect them to the Book of Allah? Uh, just give us an insight, inshallah, ta'ala, of the course that you're going to teach. So, uh, this is a, uh, a work by Imam al Shatibi. You mentioned earlier um, how prolific this Imam was, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He has a work on the Rasm of the Quran, and it's truly beautiful. And he's uh, outmatched. No one has been able to contend with him in this. It's known as Aqidat al Fadl al Fasaid fi Asl al Maqasid fi Adni Rasm al Masahib. It's 297 lines long, and we are going to be uh, delivering the explanation of the Muqaddimah at Al-Madrasat Al-Umariya, which is 45 lines. And these 45 lines, he explains the historical development of the Mus'haf. Like this Mus'haf that we have now, I don't have one that's um, close to me. The Mus'haf that we have now, how did it reach us like this? From fragments and from being written on date palms and things like this, and leaves, how did it come like this today? And he explains all of that from the perspective of the Sharia, and specifically the perspective of the Quran and the sciences of the Quran, and specifically, how does that work? We're going to discuss that, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly believe, Sheikh Wallah, when it comes to the, the preservation of the Quran, and Sheikh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the preservation of the Quran today that we have, uh, the, or the concept of preservation of the Quran, that today a lot of discussion is going about it, and people are speaking about it, and shubuhat have been thrown out there. A lot of it's got to do with mastering and having good understanding of Qiraat and the knowledge of Ilm al-Rasm al-Mus'haf and right, also sir. the Dabt of the Qur'an and how it's written. Yani, would I be right no, to just, say that? You're absolutely right, yes. We know, we know our scholars, they say, مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ فِي غَيْرِ فَنِّهِ أَتَى بِالْعَدَائِ Imagine now some of the things that maybe the viewers can relate to, uh, to uh, all of them the viewers can relate to. Imagine you have a brother who studies computer science or studies engineering. And then he comes out the next day and he speaks about uh, nursing or medicine or this. But you're studying computer science. You're going to make blunders and mistakes and errors. You have not studied this. <laughs> and what time have you dedicated it to, to, towards it? Nothing. Nothing. And this is the same. The Quran and the Sharia of Allah is, is more befitting for that example. <laughs> it's more befitting. So only a person who has understood the intricacies and the details of it is able to explain it to the people. One that doesn't know, even if they are... Uh, someone who's prolific and mufakham, mubajjab, he's profound in other areas, even in the sharia, maybe this area they don't know it very well though. And thus they are bound to make mistakes because every human being makes mistakes. So only a person, you're right, that knows the qiraat well, knows the rasm of the masahib well, is able to uh, quench your thirst and understanding about the science, this great science. Sheikh, yeah. Jazakallah khairan for give us, giving us your time. Well, you shed light on a lot of a lot of the uh, concerns and the questions that people have, you gave us, inshallah ta'ala, I believe, uh, general qawaid and principles to implement. And I hope, inshallah ta'ala, many of the viewers and the people who are watching are not only going to, inshallah ta'ala, listen to this podcast, but they're going to go home and realize that they should now start memorizing the book of Allah, Azza wa at least, like myself, just one, one qira'ah, at least start with that. Uh, and then, inshallah ta'ala, then think of uh, branching off um, into other other qiraat, inshallah ta'ala. Shaykh, may Allah honor you. Any last words, any last final advices that you want to give? I mean, barakallahu feekum, Shaykh. Maybe we can conclude, inshallah ta'ala, by speaking about the virtues of the people of the Quran by Tayyibat al Nashr, written by Imam al Jazari himself, to leave the people, inshallah ta'ala. And motivated and encouraged to begin their journeys, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala he said, Wabadu Hal Insanu Lisa Yashrufu, Illa Dina Yahfadu Wayarifu, Ida Kakana Hamirum Kurani, Ashwafa Dumati, Ulil Ihsani, Wa inna hum finna si ahullahi, wa inna rabbana bihim yubahi, wa kala fil kurani anhum wa kafa, li anahu awratahu manistafa, wahwa filufra shafi un mushafau, bihi wa kawluhu alayhi usmau. يعطى به الملك مع الخلد إذا توجه تاج الكرامة كذا يقرأ ويرقى درج الزنان وأبواه منه يكسيان فليحرس السعيد في تحصيله ولا يمل قط من ترتيله وليجتهد فيه وفي تصحيحه على الذي نقل من صحيحه هذا مقطع من طيبة النشر and to explain all of it we are going to delay the podcast but I will quickly give an overview إن شاء الله 
So he explains in the beginning, وَبَعْدُ فَالْإِنسَانُ لَيْسَ يَشْرُفُ إِلَّا بِمَا يَحْفَظُهُ وَيَعْرِفُ He says, mankind, human beings, nobody will ever be given status and honor except through that which they know and that which they have memorized. بِمَا يَحْفَظُهُ وَيَعْرِفُ Like Allah says in the Quran, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ the people who know and those who don't know, are they the same? They are not the same. Allah said, we have raised the believers and we have raised the scholars higher than the believers. So the Imam is indicating towards us. When you know something, when you have memorized something, you have knowledge, you have been given status automatically. Because you are sahib ilm. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, for that reason, the one who has become uh, a person who has learned the Quran and memorized this subject, they have become the highest of the high. Mm-hmm. This, is the, uh, this is the understanding of the Prophet It's hadith. Where he says, من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. Then he speaks about, which means the best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. Then he speaks about that these are the people of Allah. Subhanallah, imagine you are now from the people of Allah. An authentic hadith as well. Inna lillahi ahlina min nas Allah has a special group of people from all of mankind. The Sahaba, they asked men whom. And then the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Ahlu al-Quran hum ahlullahi wa khasatu. Those who are near and special to Allah. Okay. Then he speaks about other virtues, other virtues, how the Quran is going to intercede for you, al Qiyamah, how you are going to read and ascend and recite the Qur'an and climb the darajat of Jannah. All of the ahadith are authentic. يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ اِقْرَى وَارْتَقِ وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَتَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ تَقْرَأُهَا اِقْرَأُوا صُورَةً اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ Read the Qur'an today whilst you still can, but verily it will come on the day of judgment to intercede for you. All of these things, imagine he's going to speak about the science we summarize in one hour, or maybe slightly more. And before all of that, he's giving you these virtues and laying it down to give you tarheeb and to encourage you and to motivate you. So may Allah Azza make us from these people and grant us such virtues. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the elite of the people. I would like to conclude by saying, and may Allah Azza bless the uh, colossal and great efforts of the Madrasa al and yourself, yeah, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, and all of the brothers that are with you. And uh, honestly, I am very happy to have uh, participated in this podcast. And we're and perhaps one of them. I, I believe that it's perhaps one of the best ones I've ever done, or if not the best one. Alhamdulillah. Oh. podcast. I, the best, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a podcast hosting it, hosting it for sure. I've always been the guest. Yeah, we, have, we have to do. We have to do a second. Oh, it was. It was an honor, Sheikh. It was an honor, mashallah, hosting you, Sheikh. Jazakallah khairan. And I honestly, sincerely, wallahi, benefited from you. You put some things in perspective for me as well, and I definitely know the listeners are benefiting from you as well. And you've, mashallah, inspired us all, Sheikh, to uh, pursue this path of learning the Quran and memorizing the Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a beacon of knowledge and shower his loving ending, ending mercy onto you, inshallah. Sheikh, I leave you there. You too, Sheikh. Barakallah. I mean, Jazakallah. Barakallah. Wa Jazakallah. Wa Jazakallah. Wa Jazakallah. Wa Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action? right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.